What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with the fifth logic challenge which will take a lot less time for me to evaluate than the previous one hopefully. A lot of you guys in the discord were asking for a logic challenge that was more pure logic that didn't involve any sort of mechanical systems, didn't rely on the scrap mechanic physics at all. I know with the crate stacking sometimes the fast creations they wouldn't really work the same way every time you tested them just because of the way scrap mechanic calculates the physics. And then the same sense with like the line followers and that sort of thing. A lot of people were saying, well, my line follower worked 100% of the time, but then when you change the frame rate, stuff gets a little bit different. And so we have a pure logic test. Now this is a logic test where you will have to build a creation off the front of this sort of device here, which I'll explain in a minute. And you connect your creation into these green gates, these blue, this red gate, and uh, and these white gates here. These switches are just sort of for a demo, as well as this blue button, just for a demo. But you will have to connect your entire creation into this front panel. And uh, basically, you're going to be solving a code. So I've decided I'll make a creation for this as well. I wasn't sure if I was going to or not because I'll know the code. I should be able to make the creation regardless of what the code is and uh, and just have it work no problem. And I'll guarantee you guys that I don't just cheat and wire it up to know the code right away. So the rules are really simple. Uh, you can build as much as you want. You can extend this platform out if you'd like. If you want to build extra sections onto here, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, you just can't touch anything behind the black wall or any of this circuitry back here on the black wall. This is all the circuitry that I've set up to evaluate what the code is. Really simply, what you're trying to do is figure out what the binary number is. So there's 10 bits here, you see, and if we, we can do this, for example, we can light them all up or we can just have one lit up, doesn't matter. But your code basically has to provide the 10 bits in whatever pattern you think is appropriate, like this, for example. And it has to match that pattern to whatever is set here in the back on these switches. So let's just set the first five, for example, like this, and we'll leave the second five off. And if we hit the blue button, that sends a pulse through the blue gate, which then returns four of these numbers are right. Now, this four is not a four indicating any sort of position. It's four indicating four numbers are right. This actually uses a binary adder back here and then just outputs simply how many of them you've got right. It doesn't tell you specifically which ones, and I can promise you each specific set of gates is not wired to any specific one of these. If I go like this, for example, and I click to reevaluate it, it'll take some time and then it'll go and tell me that five are right. But again, I don't know which five it is. All I know is that five of the numbers I've picked are right. So really simply, you have to build a device attached onto the front of this. You have to give it all your digits, however you want to provide them, whether it's through uh, memory bits or, or some other circuit or controllers or whatever, but you have to provide your 10 inputs. And then when you're ready, you can send a pulse down this blue. Now the pulse, you can hold it as long as you want. It is hooked up to a one tick generator. So you're going to have to release it before you can send it again. And you'll notice it'll go it'll evaluate, it'll return the result, and then it'll flick this red gate. So that allows you to continue the cycle. If you have your device set up so that it waits until this red gate sends it another signal before it makes the next guess, that's usually the best way to do it. And you'll see it'll return these numbers before it does this. It'll also return those numbers all instantaneously. So for example, if we go like this and turn them all off, it won't return them one at a time. It'll flash all five within the same interval. Now you'll notice there is a bit of a delay set up. It actually evaluates each number one at a time here in this back circuit. All we're really doing here in the back is comparing the regular condition of each number to the not condition of each number. And if those are true, then it's allowing it to pass through this pulse. And then that pulse adds to our binary adder here. So you can see there we have five right, which is the fourth position and the one position. And then we've got another binary adder on the back, which actually counts the number of attempts we take. And we've got a little red bit there, which I'll explain in a second. But on the back, every time we take a, a guess, every time we hit the blue switch, it'll just continue to evaluate it. So you can see if we hit the blue switch multiple times before it evaluates it, it'll actually glitch the system out. It's going to send it multiple answers, and but the, they're going to kind of all overwrite each other because it's continuously adding to the adder without clearing it. Every time you hit the switch, you clear the adder. But if I go like this a bunch of times, it's now going to add to the adder really quickly and it's only going to clear it, you know, at the end of each cycle. So you got to make sure your device waits until that red signal is received before it sends another blue signal to check. 
And then of course that will continue to add onto the adder in the back. And this adder is a 10 bit adder. So with this combination of binary, you have 10 bits in a binary setup. So it would technically be 1024 combinations. If you wanted to brute force it, by all means, you can go for it. It takes a little over a second for the device to evaluate each answer. The beauty of this is I can let this run. And if your creation is designed to stop when all 10 gates are lit up, if we set these 10 positions like so, if you design your creation to stop when this is set up, even if the red pulse is received, then you can officially end your count. And then for me, I can have 20 different creations on the map or 30 or however many of the game will let me spawn. And I can actually run them all at the same time and then just check which ones are the best and put out a full scoreboard. I know a lot of people last time were asking for a full scoreboard of the times. Generally speaking, I don't keep a full scoreboard. I just check the time of each creation against the best top 10 times. But for this, I can keep a full scoreboard and I can go back afterwards and look at what bit setting. So right now, for example, uh, we'd be on, this is the two, th the four position. So we'd be on six uh, plus eight plus 16 plus 32. So this would be uh, 32 plus six is 38 guesses so far. So we could really easily go through and check how many guesses each person took. Now, I know this is a little bit simpler. When we were talking on the Discord, we talked about doing a mastermind type setup. The real mastermind game uses, I believe, four numbers instead of 10. But instead of having only two positions for each number, it has six positions for each number. You have one number here with six positions, which would give you uh, six to the power of four, which in turn gives you 1,296 combinations. But the real mastermind game also gives you a second piece of information. So it'll tell you the number that you got right in the right position, which is this right here. But then it'll also give you another set, which tells you the number you got right, but in the wrong position. I know this is going to seem very, very difficult for a lot of people. It's not that hard of a challenge as you'd think it is. I, I wanted to make this uh, as easy as I could for those who didn't understand logic, but again, keeping with that pure logic aspect and trying to get to uh, hopefully one winner who has the fewest number of guesses. Now, I myself know there are ways to do this 100% of the time with less than 20 guesses. I'm not going to say how many guesses it'll take because that might give it away, but I know of a way to do this with a certain number of guesses that will always work no matter what with that exact number of guesses every time or potentially less guesses than that. There are ways to do it with less guesses than the way I can think of, but you have to do a little bit more implied thinking. So your, your device has to be smart enough to sort of imply a few things and make a few assumptions. Now, in the real Mastermind game, you get 10 guesses to guess all four, but again, you do have that extra piece of information. So this is just a really, really simple sort of competition to see who can make a device with pure logic. Now, your device is going to have to have a start switch, obviously. Uh, I don't intend on hitting the blue button. You can add the start switch wherever you want. Just make sure in your device download on the workshop, you let me know how you start your device, how you want it to go. Uh, when you first do spawn this on the lift, you will see the circuits do take a bit of time. There is a little bit of a pulse generator here, which is designed to reset all the adder positions of all the circuits. So you have to make sure that you don't have your device start right when it spawns on the lift. It has to have a bit of a delay there. And then finally, this red bit. Now, the way an adder works in binary is really quite simple. Uh, if we have, you know, let's just put a button down here so we can show you guys how this works. When we hit this button, this pulse goes through all the comparisons and each time the comparison is made right, it will add one count to the adder. Now, you can't wire your device into any of this stuff back here. That would make it really, really easy. But you can tell as it goes through which ones it's evaluating is correct and which ones it's not. And as it does that, it adds to this count. So an adder is really simply each of these bits here. I kind of have this one a little bit spread out. And then two conditions on each bit, an exclusive or and an AND gate. And the exclusive or says if the bit is off and we have an input, then set the bit. And the AND gate says if the bit is on and we have an input, reset the bit and set the next bit. It's like when you add a number and you add, let's say, 9 plus 2 and you have to carry the 1. That's really exactly what this is doing, except you're adding either 1 plus 0 or 1 plus 1. So it's either 1 plus 1 or 1 plus 0. And if it's 1 plus 1, it carries. And if it's 1 plus 0, it just stays as a 1. And then at the very end here, we've got this red bit. Now, this red bit is if you use up every single one of the brute force guesses. So this is a 10-bit adder in the back here, this back line, which means you can go up to 1,024 guesses. If you guess 1,024 guesses, it will trigger this red bit, which will in turn trigger this red light, which basically means you lose. If you have guessed 1,024 times, which is 100% brute force, uh, then you automatically lose. This bit will be set and this bit will never get reset. So I'll be able to know even if you go to 2,000 guesses, 3,000 guesses, 4,000 guesses, it doesn't matter. You instantly lose if this goes. And the reason why is if you get past the 10-bit adder, 
for example, if you get past the 1024 and then you guess 1025, it'll actually only show one here. It won't show the full thousand. It'll only show the one. It'll reset all the other bits. So I have to make sure that I can check and make sure that uh, you haven't gone over that 1000 and gone to 1025 guesses because then it would look like you got it in one guess when in reality you did not. So it's a really simple competition. Again, you can have as much stuff out front here as you want. You can extend this platform as much as you need to. And uh, your goal is to get all 10 of these lights to light up, regardless of whatever switch combination is in the back here. I will leave the switches on the back here, as well as the switches on the front and the blue on the front. I will check connections when I spawn this to make sure that there is no connections that are coming from anything but these gates here mounted to this wall. I know there's all this stuff in the back, but you're not allowed to touch anything in the back. And I will be checking to make sure that. Now, in terms of uh, rules for blueprints, glitches, that sort of thing, I'd prefer... No blueprint editing, no glitches of any kind, really. You know, I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, you know, I want self-wired XORs because they're smaller, but I am giving you infinite space to build this in so you can make it as wide as you want, as large as you want, as long as I can actually spawn it on a map somewhere. And it'll be easy for me to test because I plan on just putting a ton of these creations on the same map, telling them all to go, and it doesn't matter how fast they go. Again, it's going to be who can solve the code with the lowest possible number showing on this binary adder at the back here. So I will do my own design as well. I Again, I know there's a way to do this in less than 20 guesses all the time. I know some of you hardcore logic guys, you might all get it within the same sort of guess range that I'm thinking potentially, but I did want to make this a little bit easier to see if we could get more people into the hardcore logic stuff. After this one, we will go back to another logic challenge that I think that involves some physical objects. Uh, and if this one turns out to be way too easy for everybody, then I'll make a really, really hard code solving type logic challenge and uh, and then hopefully only a few people will be able to get that one but I think this is a good way to sort of do a simple enough mastermind challenge that's not 100% difficult but yet still allows as many people as possible to participate and gives me a good opportunity to test a lot of creations without having to worry about uh, you know about having to sit there and check each one individually I can do many of them at a time and it should speed up the testing process and hopefully speed up the results so make sure you guys check this out on the workshop I will include the link to this in the description down below you could of course write something that just goes through each combination one at a time until it gets to the very end for example you could just write a make a binary adder over here on the back end and your binary adder starts at all zero and every time it receives a tick from the red it increments at one and then sends a tick back into the blue that's a very simple way to brute force your way through it. All the bits start at zero. It adds one when the red goes through, checks it again, adds another, checks it again, adds another, checks it again. You will eventually get the combination and you should get it in less than 1024 unless I make this completely all on at the back of the circuit. So that's one easy, easy way to brute force it if you want to do it that way. Um, of course, if you want to get it in way less than that number of guesses, you're going to have to use this feedback loop and you're going to have to change your inputs based on the feedback loop. So I encourage you guys try this challenge out. Should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. And of course, I'll include the link to the Discord in the description down below. I prefer that you guys submit the creations on the Discord, although you can email me if you want. If you have some, uh, you know, some issues with using Discord, that's fine. You can always email me the creation. And the uh, my email is, of course, in the about section of the channel. But uh, if you would like to include them on the Discord, it's easier for me. I will include a download section for that. So I think for this challenge, we're going to set the due date to be on the Monday. So it gives you time over the weekend to do it. And then I will go through the results, hopefully during that week, and release it by the end of that week. Uh, it shouldn't take me too long. Like I said, it should be relatively easy just to test them all and then do an actual video showcasing how some people solved it. I do think in this challenge, there might be a few people tying for first place. I'm hoping that one person does it really, really properly and implicitly. Um, but again, I know there are going to be a bunch of people who get it in less than 20 guesses if they are thinking about this just sort of logically how you could solve this. But let me know, of course, what you think of this challenge in the comments down below. And make sure while you're at it to hit that like button and that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you all next time.